everyone, welcome to a new Future Spells Pick a Card reading. It's been a minute, you guys. <laughs> My name is Michelle. Um, this is Soul Purpose Activation. I'm going to be your reader today, and we are tapping into the energy of uh, um, how close are you to manifesting union with your future spouse, okay? We're going to be checking up on the overall influence, the energies, whether those energies are helping or hindering union with your future spouse. And then um, looking into, you know, what might be able, what what might you be able to do to um, help manifest them in faster if the timeline doesn't seem to be a timeline that you want, okay? Because we will be also looking at um, a timeline, a possible timeline of when they'll be coming in, okay? So keep in mind, you guys, it's a general reading. Take what resonates, leave behind anything that doesn't. If you want to book a personal reading, um about manifesting your future spouse where we're tapping in exclusively into your your energy and what's going on with you that might, might be helping or hindering union um, i have a special kind of a reading available where it's live and you and i meet over zoom it's interactive and we can you know that way whatever energies come out you can ask questions as we go you know as for however long that meeting or that session is going to be just check the description box below i'll have the specific link to that live reading um listed below <clears throat> all right so paul one you guys chose the mukite skull you were drawn to the mukite skull and we're going to get the overall energies of what is helping or the overall energies that are influencing connection or union with your future spouse. Let's see, we got good news. We got bridge. And then we got karmic cycle. I just heard karmic cycle wrapping up. Okay. Um, I feel like you guys are actually like whatever the path is to your future spouse. I actually feel pile one like you guys are on. You're on the right path. Like you're on it. <laughs> you're on it. Good news for yeah, literally good news for you guys. What you, you're whatever you're doing right now, whatever you're doing or whatever you're not doing, it's all the right thing. <laughs> you're on point. You're on path. Um, let's find out then what we'll get us. You know, we'll get timing. Um, so just keep in mind, you guys, that timing is fluid. It can and often does change just depending on, you know, your energies, what actions you do or don't take. But according to Pile One's current timeline, how close are they manifesting? How close are, is Pile One to manifesting in their future spouse? Very fast, you guys. We got um, Aries energy, which is fire. Fire is the second fastest moving element of all the four elements. Um, and then we got the number five, okay, which five, um, the fifth house is ruled by Leo, which is another fire energy. <laughs> so um, fire usually can talk about, you know, weeks to months, okay. So it could be as little as five weeks, um, as many as five months. It could be during Aries season, or it could be during a Leo season. This is just kind of giving you an idea. But as far as like a timeline, you know, how close are you to manifesting in your future spouse? Pile one, you're very, very close. You're very close, okay? Um, five weeks to about five months is the range there. Um, <clears throat> there's some kind of a, yeah, there's some, some kind of a gap. There's some kind of a gap that you are currently in the process of bridging. I'm feeling a lot of peace about whatever that gap is. Um, I do wanna go ahead and, and let's get some more information here. With karmic cycles, we have settling scores in this life, karmic relationship. Whatever this karmic thing is, I feel like it's wrapping up or it's already been wrapped up. Uh, with settling scores in this life, I feel like that's a nod to the, the justice card to karma. Um, you've been very fair, whatever karmic cycles you've been wrapping up, whatever lessons you've been learning, um, you've been very fair with things. You've planted some really good seed pile one. So you are very much in alignment with manifesting un union with your future spouse. And then I see bridge the gap in personal growth. Yeah, I feel like you're bridging that gap with personal growth and you have used 
um, this karmic cycle um, as a springboard. Sometimes people, if, especially if they don't know how to do shadow work, if they don't know how to integrate like shadow aspects or process, you know, emotional, mental baggage or trauma, you know, karmic cycles can derail us for quite a long time because it's all about learning lessons, right? And if we don't learn those lessons and we're going to keep repeating the same cycle over and over again, it's like getting stuck in preschool or kindergarten. If we don't pass the test or we don't learn the lesson, we're not going to graduate on to the next, you know, the next part in our life. And I feel like that's exactly what you guys have been doing. Um, I'm being guided to actually clarify good news here first, though. Why is good news here? <laughs> um, no, that's just the universe's way of telling you guys that good news, you're on the right path. But we'll go ahead and see if there's any additional messages that want to come out about the good news card here. About this overall energy. The star in reverse. Okay. Uh, Aquarius energy coming out with that one. Why is the star in reverse here? Queen of Swords. Something about what happened in the past. You had a lot of hopes and dreams attached and tied to it, but you're, you've gotten very clear about whatever that person, place, or thing is. There's the King of Swords. This might have to do with a divorce, a very amicable divorce. It's amicable now. It may not have started out that way because we have the Queen of Swords and the King of Swords both, you know, in the upright position. Cold, <laughs> you know, you might be on good terms somewhat with, you know, an ex or something like that. You maybe you may have had hopes that something was going to be able to work out with this person in the past, but doesn't look like it is or, you know, <clears throat> um, There's an overwhelming sense here of just moving on. What's bridging the gap about? Ah, the King of Wands in the reverse position. Something happened in the past that may have affected your level of confidence. It may have even affected, you know, your self-esteem. Um, I'm hearing you may have even done or may have behaved yourself in a way that now you're seeing as... You know, you were kind of disrespecting yourself, um, disrespecting to your own needs, um, showing up in a way that wasn't in alignment with what you know your value to be. You may have been compromising on your, what's her, what's her laurel? Is it laurels? Compromising on your laurels? <laughs> I know what morals is, but why is laurel wanting to come through, you guys? I don't know. Anyway, um... And that's kind of like the gap. The gap is getting your groove back, reigniting that spark. We have the king. So the king is the master of, you know, the fire element. So the king, well, I should say the masculine energy, all about taking, you know, taking action, um, feeling motivated, feeling inspired, you know, creative and all that good stuff. Um, Maybe you just haven't felt like that up to this point. But the good news is, is whatever it is you're doing, even if whatever it is you're doing is <laughs> not taking action, and, you know, because you're going inwardly and you're healing. Like everything you've been doing and everything you haven't been doing is actually on point. You're on the right path. <clears throat> But the gap here, I feel, is specifically pointing to uh, self-confidence, what you perceive your value to be, um, and anything else that may have been affecting your zest and your zeal and your passion just for life in general, not just for relationships, but for life in general. Whatever happened over here with this cold-ass energy <laughs> um, really affected your zeal and your passion. I'm even hearing your lust for life. Um yeah. <clears throat> All right. What we're going to do now, you guys, is see if there's anything that wants to come through about guidance <clears throat> at this time. 
while I'm getting this energy out, you guys, make sure that you are smashing that like button. If this is resonating, comment below. Let me know what you thought so far. Um, yeah, let me know what pile you picked. Smash that uh, subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed and then hit that notification bell so you don't miss an upload or an announcement like when my readings go on <laughs> sale. Okay, um, let's see. We have, we got the nine of wands in reverse. What are we giving up or letting go of? This is guidance. So there's something you need to give up, give up on or let go of. And what is that for pile one guidance? Ooh, okay. <laughs> you might already be doing this, okay? But it's like, you know, let go and give up on um, accepting offers that are basically beneath you. I'm hearing not to date potential. Don't, don't date potential, okay? Don't take offers based off of someone's potential. That is a very specific message for somebody. It's like, don't look at somebody and be like, oh, okay, well, they have the, the potential to be somebody that's really successful, but, you know, right now, you know, they're living in the basement of their mama's house. It's like, no, you're, you're looking at potential when really what you need to do is look at the person as who and what they truly are. Um, because that would be setting yourself up for a lot of, you know, overwhelm. Let's see what the Ten of Wands is here for. There's also a message coming through for, like, don't, um, if there's any part of you that feels bad about, you know, rejecting people's offer or something like that, it's like, um, Maybe something about being in a people-pleasing mode, not feeling good about letting people down or, you know, something like that. What's the Ten of Wands here for? What is the Ten of Wands here for? Yeah, you got your own stuff. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Um, you know what your worth and your value is. You know what you're working towards. And this may be part of bridging that gap because you might be showing up in this Knight of Pentacles energy. You may have had to start building from scratch, like from the ground up. Um, and it's like, you need, you know, if you're dating or you're seeing somebody, at least make sure they match your energy. Okay, at least make sure they match where you're at in life. They, you know, their stages match where you're at in life. Because otherwise, you're going to end up taking on more on your plate than what is needed. Okay, um, and the reason why I feel like this is coming through is you, there may still, because you're kind of in the gap, there may still be some unintegrated shadows that are still subconscious, meaning you, you don't even know they're there. Okay, with the Page of Cups in reverse, there may be something within you subconsciously pile, pile one where you may have a very nurturing mother, mothering, okay, whether you're male or female, where you may seem to attract a lot of people that need to be taken care of. But it's like, you know, if you're manifesting in a future spouse, that that's not what we're doing. We don't want to manifest another kid to take care of. It's like, no, you need to at least... Um, have someone that's matching your energy. And so if you're over here, you're in, in the Knight of Pentacles energy, you know, uh, working towards graduating into the, you know, Queen or King of Pentacle energy, you know, being the, em you know, Emperor or Empress over your empire, you need someone that is at least matching your energy, at least, okay? You don't need any, you don't need any pages, especially any, any that are in the reverse position. Um, reverse position means, you know, not only... Are they not developed entirely as an energy? They are actually in the dysfunctional aspect of that energy. It's like, <laughs> now that's going to be too much work for you to do. Um, you're not here to help other people graduate. You know, you're here to have a partnership. Okay. Um, at least that's what is coming through from your future spouse. You know, um, you might be tempted by offers from people that look like they're full of potential. And the thing here, the overall, you know, guidance here is like, don't date potential. <laughs> okay. So if you meet someone and yeah, they're smart, um, you know, they're smart and they may seem like they're very, I'm hearing 
gregarious. There's some words coming through that I never, you guys may be very wordy, especially with that King and Queen of Swords that came through. <laughs> a lot of air, air, air stuff coming out. Um, look at who they are. Like, you know, don't look at the potential, take them at face value. Okay. Um, don't date the potent don't date the potential date the man or date the woman or however however that works for you guys all right pile one that is your reading i hope that it resonated thanks for hanging out with me today i will see you at your next future spouse pick a car video bye Welcome to your reading. We are back with another future spouse pick a card video. And today we are tapping into the energy of um, how close are you to manifesting in union with your future spouse. So we're going to look at some overall um, energies that are um, influencing union with them, whether that is helping or hindering union. Uh, we'll get into approximate timing according to the current timeline that you're on of when you know you'll more than likely meet them and then um what what guidance is there for you in terms of you know is there anything that you can do to kind of help the process of long, along as far as manifesting them in okay so keep in mind you guys it's a general reading take what resonates leave behind anything that doesn't uh, if you want to book something personal with me, just check the description box below. Uh, for this specific reading, if you are wondering, like, you know, what's going on with your future spouse? Why haven't you met them yet? Why aren't they manifesting? Um, I would actually book a one of the kinds of personal readings with me where it's live and in person. And I will put the link in the description box below. Uh, it's way more interactive. We, you and I meet live via Zoom. And then we can really get down to the root cause of what might be delaying union with your future spouse. Okay. All right. So, uh, pile two, you were drawn to the citrine, the natural citrine here. We'll put that back where he or she belongs. And then we're going to get the overall general energy that is influencing union here. We got sadness, alien, and then we also have the star. <laughs> <clears throat> you were born to shine, I just heard, but I don't think you feel comfortable there. There's definitely is this feeling about you feeling out of place with alien. So with sadness, we got disappointment, regret, depression, unwelcome change. We have alien with feeling alienated in life, feeling like you don't fit in, dealings with the foreigner, new experiences in life. And then the star here, we have wish fulfillment, blessings, wealth and fame, becoming quite popular, brand new and hopeful in life. Oh, um, who this might be a deeper reading pile too. <laughs> Okay, we're talking about the energies that are um, influencing union with your future spouse. And I feel for some reason, there's a part of you see like you were meant and you were born to shine. Okay, um, this could be literally, uh, you know, this talks about wealth and fame, but there may be a part of you piled to that wants to hide. Okay, we're talking about subconscious energies here, not feeling comfortable putting yourself out there. Uh, not feeling comfortable being vulnerable with someone else. Um, you're going to know that this is your pile if you have a really hard time, you know, opening up to people, making new friends, um, looking people in the eye, um, like strangers, right? Looking strangers in the eye, maybe just smiling at complete strangers. There's almost like a withdrawing energy. You, you kind of like escape, you withdraw into yourself. And so you're hoarding your energy to yourself, you know, Um I'm hearing that you're being very selfish with your energy. And of course, you're going to have reasons why that's very, it's a very, it's a self-protective thing, right? A self-preservation kind of a thing, maybe because, you know, you may have been hurt. And so you're like, when I was free with my energy before, it, you know, it got me in trouble. Um, it got me hurt or, you know, whatever the case may be. We're just talking about the energies. And so I'm hoping that, you know, whatever comes out here, um, whatever, however I deliver the messages, I'm not, you know, my intention is not to be offensive or triggering or anything like that. We're just talking about the energies and what is influencing union with your future spouse. <clears throat> the energy here feels like this energy that you're currently in is actually hindering union. It's delaying union with your future spouse. Um, it, you could literally be in the energy of depression. There may be, um, 
some unprocessed traumas, some unprocessed, you know, mental and emotional baggage. Um, we're going to delve more into it. Definitely this feeling, and it's kind of like a catch-22 because here it, I, I literally heard when the star came out, born to shine. Pile 2 was born to shine. Um, born to embody that light not just to embody it for but for everyone to see and then something may have happened to you you know you may have been in that energy and something happened to where it's like now you don't want no one to see it you kind of shrink away from the spotlight if just not avoid it altogether um and it would make sense it's like you know feeling like you don't fit in and that's because you weren't meant to fit in you know you weren't meant to fit in any mold you know you weren't meant to fit in huh let's there's a message there that's wanting to flesh out that's not quite coming let me see if i can flesh it out um help me with this energy here I feel like that depression may be coming from feeling alienated from other people, other people not quite understanding you, other people not quite getting you, um, not feeling comfortable in your own skin, I'm also hearing. There's the Queen of Wands energy coming out. <clears throat> Ooh, wow. King of Wands and the Queen of Wands together, you guys. Ooh, wow. All right, hold on. Wow. There's a message coming through for this. It's like you may be doubting whether or not there is a perfect match for you out there. And it's like literally there is. There is literally a perfect match for you out there. Um, the problem is, though, is you may not be aligning to that perfect match because you're kind of, I'm feeling your energy, but in reverse. Um, your energy <clears throat> would be either the King of Wands or the Queen of Wands. However, you know, um, whatever energy you feel you're dominant in, whether it's masculine energy or feminine energy, we're not talking about gender. We're talking about energies, right? Um, you're, you're, you're not in your energy. You're kind of showing up in the distorted version of your energy. Um, and that's why you haven't manifested in union with your future spouse yet because, you know, they might be in their healthy version. I don't want to say healthy because it's not. Uh, there's distorted energies and then there's functional energy, right? Um, that you and your future spouse are not aligned yet. Your energies are not aligned because I feel like, you know, your, your energy is distorted. You might be dealing with some self-worth issues, um, you know, especially with feeling like you don't fit in. We got you showing up here <laughs> as a fire energy. I'm possibly a Leo, although the star is more about Aquarius, which that would Aquarius and alien, <laughs> right? Heavy Aquarius energy coming through, but I'm also picking up on heavy fire, Aries, Leo, Sag. And, you know, you're supposed to be, I shouldn't say supposed to be, your um, functional energy, when you are, when your energy is in the upright position, it's self-confident, it's, I feel safe in the spotlight. Um, I know what I know and what I know. And, you know, if somebody else doesn't agree with me, it doesn't affect me at all in, in any way, shape or form. And there's not a need to shy away from the spotlight, let alone other people's awareness. Okay. Um, I just keep feeling like, and I see you like with a, a cloak of invisibility, like you just, you don't want to be seen. And it, it may be very well be because, you know, this may be a subconscious thing for you because being seen at one point in your life or maybe, you know, a phase in your life, you know, being seen meant you got in trouble. You got bullied or, you know, trigger warning, you know, you got abused or, or, or stuff like that. And so it's very difficult for you now to shine, basically. 
you know? So it's not, you can't cut your shine off. Your shine is always gonna be there. It's just you got a really tight lid on it. It's like, I can't, I can't let people see my shine. I can't let them see me sparkle. It, you know, believe it or not, there's a part of you that's very, very subconscious. You may be aware of it or not, but there is a part of you that's like, I, I'm, I can't be, I can't be attractive. I can't be, um, charming. I can't be wanted. I can't be, I can't sparkle. I can't shine. Um, if I do, it's going to get me in trouble. It's going to get me hurt. Stuff like that you know, um, and so you don't, you just hide. And that's why, you know, you haven't met your future spouse yet. Uh, even if you are active, even if you are out and about, you have your energy cloaked where even if it's like, you can't see them and they can't see you, your energy is cloaked. Okay. Uh, that's largely the energy of what's coming through about what's going on with your future spouse. So, um, let's move on and find out what the guidance is, uh, what we can do about this energy, you know, what, what, what guidance does your higher self or your future spouse or the higher self of your future spouse have to help you, um, align more to union, right? So while I'm getting this out, you guys, uh, be sure that you are smashing that like button for me if this is resonating. Comment below and let me know what pile you picked. Let me know what you thought. And sorry about that noise in the background. Holy crap. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you haven't already done so, subscribe, become part of the family, and then hit that notification bell so you don't miss an upload or um, an announcement like when my readings go on sale. All right, let's see. So for pile two, what what... What guidance do you have? What guidance do you have for pile two in terms of manifesting in union? What's your guidance for pile two? I just heard it's okay to shine. We got the page of cups in reverse. Oh, wow. And then we got, look again, we got the queen of wands and the, the king of wands and the queen of wands. This is all about, and then we have the page of cups in reverse. This has something to do with inner child work, you guys. Um, your inner masculine and inner feminine, which I feel is more, uh, more aligned to the fire element, whether you are, you know, or have fire element in your chart dominant somewhere, but I feel for a lot of you, you're really going to resonate with fire energy. Um, there needs to be balance there between your inner masculine and your inner feminine. Um, and what's throwing off that inner balance within you is something going on with inner child work. Okay, with the page of cups in reverse here. With the page of cups in reverse, you may be stuck on an you may you may be stuck on an apology that you never got. That's a big message coming through for somebody. Um, needing to know that somebody is sorry for what they did or did not do. Um, it could also be talking about being stuck on maybe an offer that you did not receive or attention that you did not receive. But for a lot of you, it's, it's an apology. Some of you are wanting an apology from someone that may never come. And this is a message coming, like, you know, right? You're stuck on an apology that you may never get. You just want to know that somebody is sorry, that they regret that they did, and blah, 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 blah. And needing that is what's holding up your blessing. That, that's literally the message that's coming through. And so what's the guidance here about that for pile two? I'm hearing let it go. <laughs> which I know is so much easier said than done. All right, so pile two, um, I know it's, if you're not ready, I totally get it. Um, and if you would like the process on how you can, you know, start towards letting that go, like really letting that go, not just intellectually, but, you know, releasing the emotional tie to that person, um, 
regardless of you know whether or not you get an apology or not um check the description box below there is a my there's a, another channel of mine here on youtube it's called your wish fulfilled um specifically there is going to be a video linked in all of the videos <laughs> on that channel called releasing the wants that's going to help you um release and sift through and let go um, whatever mental and emotional baggage that is keeping you tied to wanting an apology from somebody that may never come, okay? Um, because it, it's that very thing, that very desire that I feel is keeping you stuck. It's keeping, because like with, the, you know, with this over here, we, we you, <laughs> I mean, you already are the bomb diggity, okay? You already are. You're showing up as a king and the queen of wands. This is your inner and inner masculine inner feminine energies being expressed here y you know when when this is all balanced out you're going to feel so comfortable in the spotlight not just like in front of like a whole bunch of people but you're just going to feel comfortable being seen being heard right being noticed being acknowledged um and you're going to be very comfortable not being like everybody else because you weren't meant to be you are meant to shine. You are meant to stand stand above the rest, right? There may this may be a nod to something that you are meant to do, like a, you know, a greater mission here, like a soul purpose. Um, and with the fact that we got the King and the Queen of Wands that came out twice, your future spouse may actually have the same soul mission as you, and maybe that is why the two of you have not met yet is because you either you don't know what your soul mission is um or you're not ready for it because your soul mission requires you to feel comfortable in your own skin to feel comfortable in your own energy to feel comfortable you know being seen by a lot of people possibly possibly even being famous <laughs> okay um, which means you know a lot of people are going to know who you are and there may be a lot of you in here in pile two who are just, they don't, you don't feel comfortable with that. You're like, there's there's a big part of you that kind of wants to stay anonymous. It's like, yeah, let me work my magic, but from behind the scenes. And you're being, let's like, that's not, you were born to shine. You weren't born, <laughs> you know, to work behind the scenes. You were born to pioneer the scene, basically. Okay, you guys? Uh, thanks. So, oh, yeah. And then we got, look at that. With the three of wands in the reverse position at the back of the deck. Okay, there's some stuff that you from your from your past. Okay, that needs to be let go of, um, in order to help you um, unlock whatever it is that I I feel like your future is on lockdown. I really do. Oh, we didn't get um. Hold on. Okay, so maybe there's a reason that that happened. Let's get timing real quick. Okay, according to uh, Pile Two's current timeline, how how close are they to meeting their future spouse? And just keep in mind, you guys, um, timing is fluid. It can and often does change just according to, you know, your energy, the work you put in, um, what you do or don't do, stuff like that, okay? But according to the timeline that you're currently on pile two, let's figure out how close you are to meeting your future spouse. We got the number 10. Um, it's not too far away. We got, okay, so we have cancer energy, which is water, the water element. The water element is um, the second slowest moving energy of all four elements, okay? Um, then we have the number 10. So, um, it could be within a year, okay? We do have the number 10, that's Capricorn energy, and then we have cancer so, I mean, it could be anywhere between 10 to 15 months. But it, it keeps, I, I'm, they're shaving it down. It's like 10 to 12 months. 10 to 12 months, okay? Um, according to the timeline that you're currently on. And you know what? Maybe for you, you're comfortable with that. Um, it could also be cancer season when you meet them and or possibly Capricorn season, which if you're watching this video at the time that it is released, um, more than likely it would be Capricorn season of next year. Okay. Um, cause we're in Sagittarius season right now. Capricorn season is what about a week or two, week and a half away or so. Okay. All right, you guys, that was your reading. Um, thanks again for hanging out with me 
again today and I will see you at your next future spouse pick a car video. Bye guys. Welcome to my or welcome to your reading. <laughs> my name is Michelle. I'm going to be your reader today. We're back doing another um, future spouse pick a card reading. We're tapping into the energy of um, how close are you to manifesting union with your future spouse. We're going to get some overall general energies about you know what, what it, the energies that are influencing union. Uh, we're going to get an overall timeline to see what the timeline might be of when you're going to actually meet them, and then. Um, guidance as to what may be done to help along manifesting in union okay you guys so just keep in mind it is a general reading take what resonates leave behind anything that doesn't um if you want a personal reading i do have a reading available where um you and i can meet via zoom it's live okay interact and you know tons of interaction where we can really get down to the nitty-gritty about what is uh, going on in your energy that might be delaying uh, manifesting union with your future spouse, especially if you've been manifesting them in <laughs> for a while, okay, and nothing's been happening. Um, just check the description box below for booking details. I'll have that special link there. Um, otherwise, yeah, I have a lot of the $25 readings still available in the future spouse category, okay? Pile three, you were drawn to the Amatrine points, the Amethyst and Citrine. And then uh, let's get your overall general energies of what's influencing union. We got luck, serendipity, and then isolation. Interesting. Let's see. We got good fortune, positive change, fulfilled wishes, unexpected happiness. We also have serendipity. I'm feeling you're you're at peace. You're very much at peace. We got serendipity with divine intervention, perfect timing, happy surprises, a fortunate stroke of luck. Then we got isolation with being emotionally removed, choosing to be alone. Okay, recharging your mind and body and introspection. You are in a very serene place when it comes to your union with your future spouse. Yes, you want union with them, but you let go of needing it. There's not a desperate, clingy energy affecting you know you know this is actually beautiful energy you know as far as you know the energy that's influencing union with them it's actually very healthy um very aligned you are very aligned pile three with manifesting in your future spouse um you're very tapped in and tuned in i i, I feel like you're in a space with it where um you can't you're tuned into it but it's not at the forefront it's hard to explain you're in a very good place with it though um we got luck here twice a fortunate stroke of luck and then we've got i see i feel like you're going to be meeting your future spouse pile three when you least expect it which i feel like you already know that <laughs> so i feel pile three like you're the pile that's just going about living life you're learning how to enjoy life um as you know just by as yourself it's like you're not letting the fact that you don't have a future spouse keep you from knowing how to enjoy your life you're enjoying your life to the fullest right now you, I feel, Pile 3, you're the ones that have learned how to um, fill your own cup, you know. And so, you're learning how to find emotional fulfillment just within yourself. Yes, you want a future spouse to share that with, but you're not needing a future spouse to come and fill a void. You're, you're, you've learned how to fill, not even fill a void. It's like you've healed the void. They're long. It's like they're no, either you're in the process of... A, um, healing the void or you have already healed the void and you're just, you know, you're in that space of um, living life to the fullest, feeling mental and emotional fulfillment just in and of yourself. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful, clean. I'm hearing clean, a beautiful, clean energy. Uh, when it says here being emotionally removed, I'm feeling like being like there, there is a, a removal from toxic attachment you don't have a toxic attachment or a toxic need for a future spouse you just want a future spouse you just want to experience that you know it's very much the same thing as like you know 
there is no toxic, you don't have a toxic need or a toxic attachment to, you know, maybe like eating an apple. Now, might you like apples and might you enjoy one if one was offered to you? You're like, yeah, but there's not a toxic attachment to it. There's not a craving. There's not a lust for it, right? So, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energy. Um, I feel like your guys' reading is actually going to be really, <laughs> really short sweet and to the point pile three um let's go ahead and get um the energies of when are you guys going to meet um and just remember that you know timing is fluid it can and it often does change it just depends on what you do or don't do you know your energies and stuff like that so let's see according to pile three's current timeline how close are they to meeting their future spouse some of you already know this person i'm hearing um we have we got the number five, which is Leo energy. And then we also have um, Scorpio energy. So water is the second slowest moving energy um, of all four elements. And so it usually corresponds to months. So um, it could be anywhere from five to maybe 11 months within a year. We'll put it that way. Okay. You guys are very aligned to actually meeting your future spouse within about a year. Okay. Uh, possibly during Scorpio season, possibly during Leo season. A lot of, uh, both fixed energies, by the way. Huh. Which, you know what? Here with divine intervention and perfect timing. I feel like it, the the events, the energy has already been set in most motion. Like it's almost like the path to your future spouse in union with them has already been set, especially with two fixed energies coming up here. And for some of you, I just heard you've already met them. You may already know who your future spouse is. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is there any guidance for pile three regarding... Uh, manifesting in their future spouse, manifesting in union with your, their future spouse. What's the guidance for pile three? While I'm getting this out, you guys, um, be sure that you are smashing that like button for me. It's a wonderful way to energetically donate to the channel. Comment below. Let me know what pile you picked. Let me know what you thought of the reading. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already done so. And um, don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss an upload or an announcement like when my readings go on sale. Okay, let's see. Guidance for pile three about manifesting in their future spouse. I just heard teamwork makes the dream work. What? <laughs> um, this may be a special nod for some of you. You might work with this person. You might meet your future spouse through work. Um, if you kind of have any kind of a, um, a hesitation about dating someone that you work with, it's like, yeah, you might want to reconsider that. Let's see. Let's get a couple more cards. Interesting. Queen and the King of Wands showing up back to back in reverse. There may be some false starts too with the Ace of Cups in the reverse here. Be careful of um, getting swept up in a whirlwind with someone that may on the surface feel like they are the perfect match to you, but they're not. Okay. This might be talking about somebody you work with too. Okay. 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 <laughs> um. You might meet somebody at work, Pile 3. This is a very specific message, okay? Um, you might meet somebody at work, possibly within the next, I don't know, three months or so, that may feel very exciting, right? Um, that's not going to be your person. It's going to be a false twin or a false soulmate, or it could possibly be a karmic. Just watch out for that. Um, why, why is there anything else you want to add to that? You're going to know though, it's not, yeah, mm.
this is more yeah okay that's the thing it's like the guidance is just to watch out for that specific there there's there's someone you're going to meet it may be you may meet them through work their work your work or something and you may get asked out on a date um it's gonna feel right it's gonna feel right like you're gonna feel the chemistry you may have a lot in common <laughs> right with this person be very careful though because there's an energy here that's not the person for you okay so i think here what they're talking about like with this person you're gonna know that they're not the right person even though it feels like be very careful because they're gonna feel right okay um be very careful about allowing yourself to become prematurely attached to somebody before you get to know who they really are beneath the surface. Because you have to remember, um, you know, when we first meet somebody, it, it can take a good six to nine months before you get to learn who that person really truly is. But I'm also hearing like they're, you know, they're going to be red flags from the very beginning, which I think you're going to be very good at catching just because you yourself have done a lot of work. Especially with the fact that you're you're very careful about toxic attachment, about toxic attachment and becoming toxically attached to somebody, right? Um, there's nothing wrong with connecting with someone, with bonding with somebody. But in order for us to bond with someone, there usually has to be I don't, don't even know. I mean, you can you can get attached and bonded to somebody who is completely effing toxic. So it's just, you know, I feel like you're going to be okay, though, because I feel you're already in the space of, of understanding and knowing um, the dangers. I don't want to say the dangers, but I mean, I guess that's what's wanting to come up of becoming toxically attached, or I should say prematurely attached to somebody before you really get to know who they truly are first, right? Um, yeah, that's going to help you avoid, <laughs> help you avoid some disaster there and delay it any further, um, with the 10 of swords on the, you know, in reverse the back of the deck. Um, I don't believe in tests from the universe, but that's almost the energy that this is coming through. There may still be an unprocessed shadow that you may not even be aware of that may <laughs> pop to the surface via you know something happening in the 3d like meeting a possible false twin or somebody that feels very similar to what i you know what pile three i think you already know what the energy of your future spouse feels like and that's what it is it's like someone you're going to meet it's like they're they're able to put on that energy and so they're going to feel like the energy of your future spouse but they're not your future spouse it's they're they're wearing that energy inauthentically. I hope that makes sense. All right, you guys. All right, we're going to end your reading there. Thank you again for hanging out with me. I will see you at your next pick a card video. Bye, guys. Pile four, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Michelle. I'm going to be your reader today. We are tapping into um, uh, you and your future spouse's energy and the energy of your guys's connection and your union we're going to be finding out how close are you to actually meeting them how close are you to manifesting in union with your future spouse we're also going to be looking at the overall general energies that are largely influencing in um manifestation with them whether that energy is helping or hindering <laughs> and then we're also going to be looking at you know according to the timeline that you're on when are you more than likely going to meet them? And then the guidance as to what you can do to, you know, maybe help the process along of manifesting them in. Okay. Uh, so keep in mind, you guys, as a general reading, take what resonates, leave behind anything that doesn't. If you have been on this manifesting a future spouse <laughs> journey for a while and you're wanting to get down to the nitty gritty and find out why you haven't met them yet, um, just book a personal reading with me. I do have uh, readings available where you and I can meet in person via Zoom and we can get down to the root cause of what is getting in the way of you manifesting in your future spouse. I will put a link to that in the description box below. Other than that, I have a lot of, you know, $25 readings available in the future spouse category. Okay. Uh, let's see. So pile four, you were drawn to the Selenite Desert Rose. 
Let's find out what your overall general energy is here for what is influencing the manifestation of union with them. All right. We got deep thinking, teamwork, rebuilding, and past. Okay, I'm, I'm feeling like something's under maintenance here. <laughs> something's under construction, right? Um, let's see where, where the timing is at, and then we'll, we'll delve into what the messages are here. Because I feel like y'all are under construction. Um, I'm feel I'm I'm hearing a glow up is in process or progress, a glow up, a glow up in progress. You're rebuilding yourself from the inside out, from the ground up. Some of you, I feel like you're rebuilding yourself from scratch. Some of you may just now be finding out who and what you really truly are and getting in touch with yourself as an energy, as a person. All right. Show me the timing for pile four. And just keep in mind, you guys, that timelines, timing is always fluid. It can and often does change just according to your own energy and what you do or don't do and stuff like that. But according to the timeline that you're currently on, let's find out when you're going to be meeting them. Fairly quickly, you guys. <laughs> Um, we have, let's see, the second house, that's Taurus energy. That could also be February. Then we got Sagittarius energy, which is like literally what, at the time that this video is releasing, we are in Sagittarius energy right now. So it's like, literally, your person can be right around the corner, pile four, right around the corner. Um, other than that, we're looking at about anywhere from two weeks, two weeks to month uh, at most months right two months um but when it comes to ranges with because fire is the second fastest moving energy of all four of all four elements and so it could literally be within it you can meet this person within a couple of days you could already know this person um or you know two weeks at the most we're looking at two months at the most okay um yeah Okay, we'll leave that over there. Let's see. We got thinking twice on a decision. We have, well, we're looking at deep thinking here. Preoccupied with one's thoughts, self-reflection, being analytical and logical, teamwork here with a partnership to complete a goal. Someone will come to your aid, expanding your network, delegating tasks, and then we have rebuilding and then the past. Rebuilding your life after loss, investing a lot of effort, ready to take action to improve determination and drive. The past with feeling nostalgic, mentally reliving the past, the return of past lovers or friends, return of a past situation. See, for you guys, pile four, I feel like a lot of you already know this person. <laughs> this may be um, someone you've already dated. This could be an ex. Now, don't crucify me if that's not what you want. But, you know, of course, this is a general reading. You're not the only energy tuning in. That's just for some of the people here. Um, and then reunion with this person under the energy of you know them becoming your future spouse it could be happening as little in two days to two weeks at most two months right which that timeline is for you guys whether or not this is talking about an ex or not so for those of you where an ex is not even no ex is in the picture no even whatever right um the past could be talking about that might be the last thing that you're needing to let go of mentally reliving the past, leaving things in the past that need to be left there. For the most part, I feel like you guys are on track, <laughs> pile uh, four. Um, you may be kind of in this self-reflection mode. Just be careful. I'm hearing um, getting stuck in analysis paralysis. See, this is why I'm thinking a lot of you are wondering whether or not to go back to an ex like an ex popping up and wondering if that's your person because you're kind of stuck like is this is this them or not for a lot of you if there is someone on your mind and you're wondering if that person is your future spouse for you guys pile for that energy is coming through okay um For those of you who are not, I mean, and then this, if this isn't an ex, this may actually be somebody that you already know, though. You've met them possibly through work. You've met them through networking. You've met them through expanding, expanding your network. 
But with deep thinking, teamwork, and rebuilding here, this is a lot of work-based energy. A lot of work-based energy. Let's delve more into and see what's going on here. I see you though, you guys are like, and there's, I will tell you, there's some Virgo energy coming through. So shout out to Virgos, whether you don't have to be Virgo energy, right? You don't have to have that in your, you know, personal planets or your chart signature or anything like that. But I'm just seeing like, you guys are, you're not effing around. <laughs> you're like, I'm hearing for a lot of you guys, Paul, for it's like, you're not even going to bother. Um, it's almost like you're not even going to bother dating. Not that you're not going to bother dating, but you're not going to give your time. It's... Uh, you guys are, yeah, you guys are kind of cutthroat in this energy. I, I like it though, because you guys are like, you know, I'm going to give you three strikes and you're out, meaning like you get three dates and if three dates is it, like you're not messing around. You're not messing around with potential. That's what it is. You're not messing around with potential. You're like, uh, you're taking whoever you're with at face value and it's like, if you can't see it after three dates, you're just letting them go. You're not drawing anything out. It's like you're on a mission. You Pile four, I feel like you are on a mission. <laughs> you're on a mission to find your future spouse hell or high water i just heard okay um nothing's gonna stop you <laughs> um i feel pile four you are getting yourself out there it may not be for the purposes of meeting a future spouse but you do understand and realize that that's going to help you you know expanding your network is going to help your probability of meeting them you're yeah i'm picking up a lot of analytical energy from you guys so a lot heavy um earth energy coming through but also i'm picking up on some air energy as well so earth is taurus virgo capricorn um air is gemini libra and aquarius um let's see Hmm. Yeah, I feel like there's still something that you're not letting go of that needs to be let go of. And it may have a tie to do with your past, possibly a ch your childhood. Um, you're being called to release that burden. There's the Queen of Pentacles, that, that Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Death is Scorpio energy. Page of Cups is water, Scorpio Pisces, Cancer. Why is the Ten of Wands here? I honestly, yeah, you're giving up on this. <laughs> you're not dealing with anybody who's not matching your energy. You're not dealing with anybody who's not on the same level as you are. Um, there is still a lingering connection, though. That you may be having a hard time letting go of and fully releasing. But I, I feel like that's not stopping you from moving forward. Um, yeah, because with the Nine of Wands in reverse here, it's like you're you're giving up. You're giving up on any kind of energy that's not matching your energy, adding value to your energy or your life. And, you know, it's not like you're saying that you're better than these people or they're better than you or you're better than them or anything like that but you're just kind of in this space where it's like i'm not wasting my time with energies that don't match mine because you know what you want you're in this very headstrong i know what i want i know what i deserve kind of an energy and you know you're expressing through the queen of pentacles and king of wands energy you're you know what you want and you're out there getting it you're getting it whether it's dates whether it's you know significant others whether it's money whether it's goals it's you know you're getting it you have an empire that you're wanting to build with somebody because you're on track to you're making big moves in your life above and beyond you're making big moves in your life above and beyond wanting a future spouse but you so what you're wanting and what you're manifesting this is what you're manifesting you're manifesting somebody in that can be a partner to you so it's a partnership to complete a goal someone will come to your aid it's like you don't want to, and this is actually really very healthy energy you're not looking to do everything by yourself you're like i want a partnership 
you don't want to, it's not that you want to completely run the show. You want someone to come in and help. You want, you know, to be able to delegate things to, you know what I mean? You're looking for a partnership. You're not trying to control and manipulate every step of the way. You want someone to come in and you want to do life and work and business with this person together. It's like both of you are the boss and, you know, you might have different strengths and weaknesses and where your strengths are or where your weaknesses are their strengths can make up for that and vice versa i hope that may i'm sure that makes sense to you guys yeah look at that with the four of wands in the upright position you guys are very close to union with your future spouse very close very very close let's see i'm gonna get one more uh we're gonna see what guidance there is while I'm getting this energy out, you guys make sure you are smashing that like button. If this is resonating, comment below. Let me know what pile you picked. Let me know how it resonated. Uh, smash that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Become part of the family and then hit that notification bell so you don't miss an upload or an announcement like when uh, my readings go on sale. Okay, let's see. What guidance do you have for pile four in terms of manifesting in union? with their future spells. What's Pile Four's guidance? Believe it or not, there is still a part of you that is resistant to allowing somebody to come in. Look at that, yeah. Look at that, look at that, look at that. <laughs> the King of Wands in reverse to the Queen of Wands in reverse. There is still a part of you that is very resistant. It may be subconscious. You may have a hard time relinquishing control in certain areas of life and it's very difficult for you i feel like you're kind of trying to learn how to do that um it's like you up until this point paul for you may have had to have been the mom and the dad or the masculine and the feminine in you know in whatever your relationships were and you still have a very difficult time um, releasing the masculine role. For a lot of you, I feel like you are um, divine feminines. Like you feel like that's your dominant energy is the divine feminine when it comes to romantic relationships, right? Um, if not, just, you know, I'm just picking up on the majority of the energies tuning in, but just put it how you, you know, how you see fit. And this is just the guidance coming in when it comes to manifesting in union. When this person comes in, it may feel very uncomfortable at first to, you know, because yeah, intellectually we can be like, oh, it's going to be nice to have somebody come in and, you know, take over this area and take over that area and blah, blah, blah. But then <laughs> for somebody that is used to, you know, I don't want to say controlling, but having to be responsible for everything themselves, it can be, it can feel very jarring, at least in the very beginning, to allow yourself to release that responsibility to someone else because that takes a huge degree of trust, right? So uh, there's just kind of a nod here to that energy, like there may still be a part of you, Paul, for um, that feels very uncomfortable and very um, unsafe. Um, allowing someone to come in and be a helper to you. Cause I feel like a lot of you have, you have had, you've done everything up to this point yourself, right? You've had the reins. I'm hearing for a lot of you, your entire life. And it's going to feel very uncomfortable to allow someone to come in and maybe, you know, take over the finances or take over, you know, balancing the checkbook or take over wh whatever that may be, <laughs> you know, like make your skin crawl kind of a thing. But it's like in order for, you know, you, you to go to the next phase of your life, you know, above and beyond manifesting a future spouse, it's like you have to um, allow the divine masculine to step into that divine masculine role and flip flop that if you feel like, you know, you are the divine masculine, then it would be allowing the divine feminine to embody their divine feminine role. I hope that makes sense. Okay. All right, you guys. Um... Yeah, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you guys at your next Future Spouse Pick a Card video. Bye, Pile 4.